Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're discussing if you should be using a high intensity red light therapy panel that causes significant heating. The answer comes from Dr. Praveen Arani, who is being interviewed by Ari Witten on the Energy Blueprint YouTube channel. The link to the full video is in the description below, which to follow fair use, I do encourage you to go watch the whole thing and give Ari Witten a like for sharing this important and insightful interview, which is probably a lot more credit than Ari will be giving me for all the inspiration that he's gotten from my blogs. So let's see what Dr. Arani has to say about photobiomodulation and heating. As long as you don't cross the thermal threshold, that's the caveat. Okay. So you, we know with the infrared, you can easily, you know, heat tissues. And that is not what we want to do in PBM. Here's a good example of why we think non-thermal treatments are actually PBM. So if you're looking for a PBM, which is a kind of biological response, you should not be causing significant heating. I think if you look at the newer devices and lots of the beds, I think a lot of people actually complain of being very hot inside. Really? And especially with the new high power LEDs, it is not difficult to generate heat, but you're negating your benefits. If any person is feeling uncomfortable or feeling hot, then there is a problem. If they're feeling okay. warm, that's a sign that you know either you back off or you stop treatment. In multiple ways, Dr. Arani says that PBM is not heat and that for a proper PBM response, you should not have significant heating and that heating starts to negate your benefits. Dr. Arani's advice is that if you are feeling hot or uncomfortable, then that is definitely a problem. But if you are even feeling warm, then that is a sign you need to back off. You probably need to reduce the intensity, increase your distance away, or maybe even use pulsing. And I love how Ari acts like this is his first time ever hearing anyone complain about high intensities. Really? And I like really, Ari? You've been selling the highest intensity panels on the market for years, and you've never heard any of this kind of feedback? It is a range but it's, that- But it's not, going, it's not going to be above 45 degrees. I mean, you, I mean, it would take a really powerful device to heat the tissues to that, that hot. And just notice how Ari gets so aggressive with trying to confirm his biases. And look how exasperated Dr. Arani is getting with having to correct him on another fallacy. Really? And I'm comfortable, so I don't think it's impossible to get significant heating, but it's definitely possible, especially with the new high power LEDs. It is not difficult to generate heat but you're negating your benefits. So again, Ari Witten should know this, that high intensity LED panels are causing significant heating. That's why they're having this discussion. That's why Ari Witten is debating this point so hard. Eight years ago, when the first generation panels were a lot less intensity, then this was truly a non-issue. And Ari Witten himself was perfectly happy to endorse those low intensity first generation panels. And I don't remember any influencer saying that those first generation panels were not effective enough but more importantly, way back then, I was not seeing any complaints about overheating, skin redness, sunburn type, type effects. That has only happened in the past three to four years. So now heating is an issue with the latest generation LED panels, especially because some people keep making evidence-based blogs about how PBM is not heating. And that's getting in the way of some sales narratives. So I need to accept this as a big win for me because at least influencers are starting to acknowledge the existence of heating and the possibility of it being an issue. So the real question is, is how much heat is allowable and tolerable for photobiomodulation? Since we know Ari Wynn is not gonna stop selling high intensity panels that are causing heat, so we need to define how much heat is still safe and effective. Which Dr. Arani mentioned several times is that the range between 42 to 45, they've clearly documented as having a detrimental response. So at 42 to 45 degrees, you start inactivating the ROS scavengers. I think that we always talk about a range. So it's, I think it's 42 to 45 to be precise uh, on the surface, which means that inner temperature, depending on your wavelength, can be higher or lower depending on which wavelength you're using. So now future dosing guides from high intensity panel brands and their influencers need to include that you need to monitor your skin temperature to make sure they do not exceed these detrimental levels. But ultimately, Ari Witten did wear down Dr. Praveen into saying what he wanted. Come on, bro, a little warming's okay. Be reasonable. <laughs> Ari Witten is the most unreasonable person to talk to. And you know how you know? is because he has a knack for making you feel like you're the unreasonable one. You're negating the benefits even if it's mild warming that's just feels pleasant. 
you know, pleasant warming oh. of the tissue, no, or, no. or only when you get to like really uncomfortably hot. Uncomfortably hot. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. That's how Ari Renton ends this five minute long conversation where he keeps asking the same question over and over again until he got the answer that he wanted. This was not a discussion. This was not a debate. This was not listening to and learning from an expert in the field. This was manipulation so Ari Witten could reinforce his sales strategy for selling high intensity panels that are causing heat. And so that's real science for you. We successfully coerced the leading researcher into saying that you can have as much heat as you want as long as you're not uncomfortably hot. But as Dr. Rennie was trying to explain is that feeling heat is very subjective. It depends on skin color, on skin thickness, and just your overall sensitivity to heat. So it's a very subjective process. What would be more objective and more scientific and safe would be to monitor your skin temperature during high intensity treatments. And notice how Ari Wynn did not cite any actual PBM literature to make his points. If it was so obvious that PBM is better with just a little bit of heat, then Ari Wynn should be able to cite relevant studies to make this point and not have to rely on logical fallacies or hearsay and extrapolating things from Dr. Hamblin. Yeah, Hamblin, uh, Dr. Hamblin would definitely agree with that. Did Ari do a mind meld with Dr. Hamblin? Why is Ari Witten speaking on behalf of Dr. Hamblin? Why bother interviewing Dr. Praveen if you're not going to listen to him unless he confirms your biases? That is really disrespectful. It is fine for scientists to disagree and have divergent opinions. That's a part of the scientific process. A hallmark of pseudoscience is seeing opposing opinions and opposing evidence as an attack on your own biases. And just listen to the kinds of intensities that Dr. Hamblin usually talks about. So it depends what area you're irradiating. If you're irradiating a big area, like the whole body, right? You know, 10 or 20 milliwatts per square centimeter is high. You know, how efficient you're going to be in doing it. It depends what device you have. If you have a helmet, then, you know, an irradiance of 20, 30 milliwatts per square centimeter will get you a couple of thousand joules in a reasonable time. So usually Dr. Hamblin is talking about 10 to 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So if you're feeling some warmth from reasonable intensity and doses, then yes, that is perfectly fine. Even I am in 100% agreement that you're going to feel a little bit of subtle warmth with reasonable intensities. And notice how one of these interviews was between Ari Witten and Dr. Hamblin. Yet you never hear Ari bring up that point that Oh, well, Dr. Hamblin told me that 10 to 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared is high for full body red light therapy. So it seems like Ari's psychic link to Dr. Hamblin is extremely selective in very convenient ways. So will Ari Witten be able to present both sides of the argument in his new book? Will he be able to cover the science that says photobiomodulation is mostly non-thermal because there's a lot of it? And he can also cover the science that says photobiomodulation is fine with a little bit of heat which there is some if you're good at cherry picking. That way you can present both sides of the evidence and both sides of the argument and allow your readers to make an informed choice. You know, like informed consent, not coercing people into using high intensities and heating that have not been fully studied in humans yet. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.